But yeah, on a part like this, I would never have designed something like this even 10 years ago. When I got started in the machining world and the engineering world, all we had was three axis CNC's. Maybe you would see a four axis, but it was like a really custom modified machine. But now they have these five axis mills and these really precise ball end mill operations that you can run. So you can basically make the part look like whatever you want. And it's going to take a lot of machining time, but it is possible. Whereas that wasn't always the case. Design for machining was a really intensive process. And there would be a lot of back and forth between the machinist programmer and the engineer to make sure that features were actually machinable. And if you got a part that was all wonky with weird features that were not machinable, you could tell immediately that the engineer didn't know what they were doing or they had never set foot in a machine shop. So it was a huge advantage I had when I was young, growing up in a machine shop, carrying that into engineering and knowing exactly what is and is not possible. That being said, these days, almost anything is possible with these five axis machines. They can make some really wild curves and organic shapes. And especially if you bring additive manufacturing into the mix, like 3D printed metal is becoming stronger and more common, you can make almost anything that you can think of. And that's especially exciting for the world of generative design, where you use an AI tool, not like ChatGPT, where it's text generation, but mechanical design generation, where you can optimize a part in FEA to add material where you need strength and remove material where you don't need it, really optimize stuff to make it as strong as possible, as light as possible, and also be manufacturable.